Today, I'm that thieving chick from the Three Little Bears story. Let's see what's going on in this house. It looks like someone has left all of their nine millimeters out. Let's give them a try. Let's try this little guy out first. Just too small. is isn't really gonna get the job done, if you know what I mean. What about this one? This large nine millimeter. Let's give this one a try. Just feels too big like you really couldn't even conceal it very well what about this nine millimeter that one is just right what's up guys welcome back to rugged adventures i'm super happy to have you guys here today because we are going to be looking at if pistol caliber barrel length makes any difference whatsoever. A lot of times when I do these videos, we'll uh, do like a nine millimeter versus 45 or 40 versus 45. And when I look in the comments, a lot of people are saying, well, this one had a you know, half inch barrel length advantage over the other one. So it wasn't exactly a perfect test. And like I've said many times in this channel before, we are not running a science lab here. This is for fun and we're comparing these, but a lot of times that does come into play in the comments. For example, we had one that said that our 45 had a half inch uh, barrel length advantage over our 40. Even though the 40, you know, pretty much ran away with the test and was better than the 45 and everything, you know, people still had a big problem with that. And so when I start looking at things like these charts, these velocity to barrel length charts, uh, I start seeing uh, some trends in that there is not a lot of velocity to be gained with a bigger barrel length. And you guys can look these up. I'll put them on the screen. And for like, for example, the nine millimeter at 115 grains, at a two inch barrel, you're getting 948 feet per second and up to an 18 inch barrel, it's uh, 1297 feet per second, which isn't a whole lot. On the, on the 45, it's even worse. A two inch barrel is 754 and an 18 inch barrel is 937. So today we have three guns that we're gonna look at. The P365 that has a 3.1 inch barrel. This is a very small gun. It holds 10 plus one. It's, it's pretty amazing how many it holds. Uh, I don't particularly like this gun other than being able to carry it concealed because it is so small in the hands. The next one we have is a PSA dagger. This is the compact model with the 3.9 inch barrel. We'll just round it up to four. And uh, this is pretty indicative of any or representative of any of the compact to full size pistols that you may see people carrying like a, a Glock 19, Glock 17, Glock 23, um, in, in a lot of the uh, MP series, any type of mid to full frame pistol. And then we have our kel Sub 2K that it has a 16.15 inch barrel. You know, we'll just say it's 16. It is more like a rifle and it, it will be our largest uh, barrel that we're going to have today. And really, you know, it's sort of ridiculously sized it does fire very well and uh, it, it, it works, but you may be better off when you got a gun this big of just going with something else like a 300 blackout or even a rifle pistol like a, you know, uh, a 762 by 39 or even a 556. And so does barrel length make any difference? Yes, it does technically. Before someone types down like a seven paragraph thing where they give me all the physics, obviously the longer the barrel to a certain extent, you're going to get more velocity. But there's other benefits besides that. One is the sight radius. When you are aiming this, and there's no one behind the camera, but when you are aiming this, you have a much uh, narrower sight radius on that versus this if you were not using the optic or versus this if you had iron sights on it which makes it much easier to uh to find your target acquire it and be able to put a shot on target as you might have heard we missed one with this we did a first take with this and this magnet ended up jamming uh and we hit them all on that one all the other ones we were able to hit 100 percent of the time and i uh, you know take that as being that this is harder to aim than this and even harder than the uh, than the larger one so besides the sight radius, typically a larger gun is going to have more recoil control, either from that they're able to put better springs in it, bigger springs, or it just has more mass, or you can get your hands on it better. You can get your hands on this pistol much better than you can get your hands on this pistol. And with the two points of contact on a handgun, uh, makes it inferior to this where you can get three points of contact and you have a, a much larger spread, the, the firearm anchored back here and you were out here. So there is some benefit to barrel length that goes
goes beyond the uh, just the energy, the velocity of it. But we're gonna see exactly if there is any real life difference in our wood block, if you guys can see that. We got our soda can test, and we'll try shooting that uh, 1 8 piece of steel. We haven't hit any uh, pistol rounds get through it, even 40 and 45, so I doubt if these are gonna do any different, but let's get right to it. So we've got our one by one by one wood block about 21 feet away, seven yards, and we'll see if these have any differences in penetration um, with that wood block. Now I may have to go down and actually uh, write which gun that it was since we are shooting all nine millimeter today, and uh, it may get a little confusing depending on where the bullet placement ends up being. But first up, the 3.1 inch barrel SIG P365 from 21 feet. It looks like we're just underneath the U in subscribe. Next up is the uh, PSA dagger. This is almost four inch barrel. We'll try to come a little bit right of that if I can actually do it for once. And we seem to be right in the middle of that one. And it's funny because like I just noticed most of my handguns don't have physical safeties on. I'd really have not noticed that, uh, you know, until I started putting all these right here uh, next to each other. Next, the sub 2K with the 16 inch barrel on it. We'll try to go a little bit lower and a little bit more to the right for that one as well. Take the safety off there. And right, just right where we wanted it to. So let's go and see what we did. No marking necessary. So this one could not have come out more perfectly for what I thought was gonna happen and just the shot placement and how everything went. So let's get right into it. On the front here, we have the 365, we have the uh, the dagger, and we have the sub 2K. We also have subscribe and like because this is a YouTube channel and that is what we're looking for because that keeps the channel going. As we get through the first piece here, we see the 365, the dagger, and the S2K are just cruising along. They missed all the knots, which was really cool. And if you guys want, you can argue in the comments. Everyone does. It is usually an absolute disaster in there. Third, uh, third set here, the third layer, still just trucking along. Nothing really to to you know of note. Same in the fourth layer. This is where we get our first stoppage. The 365 with the 3.1 inch barrel went in here and is in here somewhere. It did not come through, whereas our dagger did come through. And we see that our, our 3.1 inch barrel has, you know, kind of petered out. Our dagger has stopped here probably within half an inch of where the uh, 365 did. Our sub 2K is still going on. This is just a dimple where the, uh, the front of that bullet went into. The sub 2K does a similar thing to the dagger. Um, it is, you know, all the way through and dimples the other side here. And so, if you're looking at the uh, the 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 uh, the 3.1 inch barrel on the 365 versus the uh, 16 inch barrel on the sub 2K, you can see already that uh, the, it it really doesn't make that much of a difference. We are over five times the barrel length from the 365 to the sub 2k and we get very similar results which even more interesting is from the 3.1 to the 3.9 inch barrel of the uh of the uh the psa dagger we get an even smaller result where it's ending within you know basically like half an inch or even less because i don't know exactly where that bullet is in there of each other and so the barrel length in this case in this uh, medium density wood doesn't really matter if we come here to the chart you know this is where people start getting their math out we can see that the three inch barrel with 115 grain jacket hollow points which is what we're using should have a velocity of about 12 or uh, 1029 uh, the 16 inch is 1295 up here and i can put these on the screen if they end up not being able to be seen and so we have a difference of about um 158 feet or foot pounds of energy between the two of them and uh, 266 uh, feet per second. So on paper, it seems like a lot. In real life, it ended up not being that much dramatic of a, of a difference. Let's see if any of these do anything wild on steel. We're gonna run through that real quick because I don't think anything's gonna happen. And then we'll shoot cans. So we've got this piece of 1 8 inch carbon steel here. This is not AR 500. No pistol has been able to go through it yet. We have 45, 40, nine millimeter. I don't remember what that one there is, but nothing has gone through it. But I haven't tried a 16 inch, uh, nine inch or nine millimeter weapon on it. So maybe that's the ticket. Small bullet going, you know, relatively fast. We'll see. 
So same guns, same distance. I don't think anything's gonna go through this. Nothing has before. But that I say that then, uh, you know, when something does go through, it can make me look like an idiot that I am. So let's get started with the uh, P365 here. I don't think it went through. The dagger from 21 feet. Again, don't see anything. And then our best chance, the sub 2K, from 21 feet, 16 inch barrel, you know, because barrel size makes a lot of difference according to a lot of folks on the internet. So this would vindicate them. Watch it, watch it actually happen. That would be hilarious. And it didn't. We'll walk down and look at it, but nothing went through. As expected, nothing went through. I think that was the 365. I think that was the dagger. And I think that that was the uh, sub 2K. If we come here to the back side, there's been several shots. This was the sub 2K, and this was the one that uh, stretched the paint the most. And so, again, nothing that I wasn't, uh, you know, already expecting. But I tell you what, we're going to be getting a 10 millimeter soon, uh, a full size 10 millimeter, and we can also have access to a 5.7 Rock. Leave me a comment down below which one of those pistols you think, if either, will be able to go through this 1 8 inch carbon steel not ar500 uh, in the future what is kind of cool is with this we keep getting these little bullet chunks i think that this is a nine millimeter this is the lead uh, from inside of it so i'm probably getting lead poisoning we have these things all over the place so that's kind of neat to find here we are at america's favorite the soft drink penetration challenge and we have as usual a delicious sam's cola this is a premium discount soft drink beverage for for your pleasure and if that doesn't make any sense at least take comfort in the fact that according to my sources they've never spot been spotted at a diddy party so without further ado let's start with the p365 3.1 inch barrel 12 of these delicious soft drinks lined up let's see how many it goes through after we're all sticky So we got six solidly because we have six left here. They, it, it ripped them apart. I mean, you know, people say the nine millimeter is not violent or something. It it tends to do this versus some of the other ones I see just kind of punch holes. And the reason that I like to see them still kind of where they are with even spacing means that it's not like one of them came and pushed in in and went into the rest of these these have all been essentially eviscerated so let's see if that dagger with you know what 0.8 more barrel length does a significant you know difference we have 0.8 more barrel on this so according to the internet it should be the end of days let's see what happens I am surprised about how much more violent that was. We cleared the entire stack, but we didn't get them all. You know, a lot of these ones here are mangled. A lot of these ones here are mangled, but we ended up with two that just got pushed off the edge. That may even be where a nine millimeter hit it. It looks like if you guys can see that, that there are uh, marks on it to, from where the bullet hit it, was not able to go through. This one seems to be unscathed. So if this was, let's say, number 11 that means it went through all 10 through here to the 11th uh finally ran out of juice and then just pushed the 12th off honestly i am a little bit surprised let's see if the 16 can uh, take out all of them i did also get more splash back with this one and you know once we go to the slow-mo i imagine it's probably going to be a much more violent uh you know impact so last but not least the 10 inch let's see if this one can take them all or if it you know doesn't only get like two or three and the test is basically completely invalid We'll find out right now. I think I did it. So it did it. It got all 12 in there again pretty much eviscerated i don't think that any of them ran into each other and what's what's funny i used the one from the last test that that got nicked right here with the psa dagger with the four inch or 3.9 inch barrel and you can see where the bullet just rode over it right there i put it last on this one and you can see that the bullet rode over it right there it was enough to at least punch a little hole in the can and so it got 
all 12 of them, whereas the, when I throw it down there, it starts spraying out. It got all 12 of them versus the PSA dagger that only got 10. And this is one of those days where the tests have worked out pretty much exactly like real life. The 3.1 inch barrel, was by far the weakest and we, again we were shooting 115 grain full metal jackets uh, the 3.9 barrel was the next best and the uh, 16 inch barrel was uh, you know the most powerful overall the key takeaway here is that you didn't get much more out of each one as the barrel length got increasingly longer there was a dramatic uh noticing of diminishing returns once you get over that like four or five inch barrel length and so when you were looking at pistols handguns not like pcc's like the like the s2k the barrel length is is not is uh it doesn't make as big of a difference on the amount of energy that the bullet has uh, you know how fast it's going uh, versus more of your uh, sight radius and the ability for the handgun to um to take up recoil and so I think that's it today, guys. Um, the thing about the wood block versus ballistic gel, which I get a lot of questions about that too. Ballistic gel just simulates flesh. So, you know, if you got a belly hit, like right here, that would be a pretty good indication. But a lot of times people are shooting for, if you're self-defense, if you're shooting uh, either with two-legged creatures or four, I get a lot of people talking about bears and 10 millimeter. 10 millimeter folks love to tell you that they shoot 10 millimeter and that it'll kill bears. But when you're looking at things like that, flesh here, you're not gonna have a whole lot. You got a little bit, then you got bones and then you have you know more flesh inside the same thing if you're looking at a headshot very little flesh bone and then flesh inside and so i actually think that like a wood block test does a little bit better of representing a body than uh ballistic gel which really only represents flesh either way guys i appreciate you guys coming here to hang out today if you haven't yet subscribe down below hit the like button for me that really helps out this channel helps out this video and helps us keep making money so that we can keep doing this stuff that we're doing down here whether you know you think it's stupid or not appreciate you guys hanging out i'll see you in the next one